Reddit. What is the most ducked up way you got back at someone that wronged you? Throwaways encouraged. Welcome to WTF Red, the only S credit channel that will blow your mind. Like and subscribe right now to support Pepe's career as an independent musician. One time a friend pranked me by pissing on my sausage. Four years later, I got him back by putting my donk in his beer at a bar when he went to the bathroom. He drank the whole thing before I let him know. I don't forget shirt like that. Edit, I mean sausage as in food. He did not piss on my cock. That is all. Edit 2. Okay so this is how it happened. Not very exciting or anything. We were at a sports bar drinking and shooting the shirt, playing pool. My buddy who had pissed on my sausage, by the way, did it before they put it on the grill. So sort of a piss marinade, set his beer down to use the restroom. One of my other buddies pointed out that he had left his beer unattended, and that I should duck with it, because all of my close friends are aware that he had pissed on my sausage as well, and I had not really gotten the chance to get him back. Well, I do the first thing that pops into my head, so I grabbed his beer, hit a corner, unzipped my pants, unleash the cock meat and put it in his beer. I proceeded to stir his beer a couple times with the stick resheath that bad boy, and place his beer back to where it was. When he came back, nobody said anything and he enjoyed his newly stirred, not shaken beer. When he finished, I just asked, remember when you pissed on my sausage? How'd my cock taste, bitch? He knew. You should have not showered for a week before you did that. I wasn't really planning on doing it, I just took advantage of a situation that presented itself. Also, I can hardly go a full day without showering. I would not last a week. How did you manage to do that at a bar? I feel like if I tried to put my donk in anything at a bar I would get kicked out instantly. I went to a corner and pulled it out then dropped it in. It wasn't very crowded. It was on like a Tuesday or something at a little shirt sports bar. You would think it being less crowded would make it more awkward. I have no shame. My past girlfriend cheated on me, and her and her roommate at the time had gotten to that point in their lease where they weren't super fond of each other, and kept some distance. Her roommate was smoking hot, kind of witchy sometimes, and wasn't fond of my ex, so I decided to make a move on her. Best move ever. The look on my ex's face, when her roommate walked me to the door in her underwear after the first night was priceless. We proceeded to have hot. Dirty, loud ex almost nightly for next 8 weeks until their lease was up and for a while after that. My ex even walked in on us in the living room once. Kinda donkish, but goddamn was it fun and there's no way I felt bad about it. TLDR, my girlfriend cheated on me, I have loud awesome ex with her roommate until the lease is up. Living well is the best revenge. My penis disagrees. That's because your penis was living really well. The enemy of my enemy, will jump at the chance to blow me. I have one I'm about to do in a couple days. See my parents suck, I've been taking care of them for a while, while also going to school and whatnot, and still they are trying to cheat me, pawn my things, etc. But I've become fed up with them. I'm out of town at the moment, but when I get back, the next time they ask me to walk 2 miles to get them a pack of cigarettes. I will walk outside, around the house, have a friend with a van come. Bring my pre-packed shirt out of the basement entrance, leave and stay at my friend's house for a few days until the day my train ticket is planned for, then move 2000 miles across the country and live with another friend who just got me a job. Rendering them worthless pill heads waiting for a pack of Pall Mall menthol 100s for the rest of their sad lives. Hey man, good luck. Sometimes there's no salvaging a situation, and it's best just to get the hell out. You should mail them a pack of cigarettes with a witty note attached to it. Something eloquent, to show that he's above the situation. Something like, duck you, and the pack should be empty. No, just one, so they have to fight to the death over it. And one end of the cigarette must be loaded with resin. Before she had a stroke, my grandmother used to smoke a lot. My dad hated the smell of smoke and would fill one end of random cigarettes with a little gunpowder, so when she lit a prepared cigarette, bam. No wonder she had a stroke. I'm immune to poison ivy, 
so I was always uprooting it in our yard, about a full acre. I'd left it on this concrete area behind our garage, because that's where it was near when I pulled it out. Hey, I was am lazy, anyway I frequently walked down to a fishing pond across this canal in my neighborhood, this is in South Louisiana, I didn't always have a functioning bike and the walk was only about a mile. A big kid, probably 2-3 to three years older than me, was a real jerkus. He'd do stuff like ride by me on his bike, and act like he was gonna high five me, but then slap my face and ride off, laughing. Anyway, one day he did that and I went back home, upset. I got my water gun and was gonna shoot him if he messed with me again. Then I saw the poison ivy and got an evil idea. In the bucket it went with some water, stirred it all up good, then dumped that in my water gun. Went back to the pond. On the way back home he came around messing with me again. I hosed him down and he broke my gun, but man it was worth it. From what I hear, he didn't go back to school for almost two weeks. Immune to poison ivy? Are you a superhero? I am immune too, so is my husband. Our kids are superheroes. Plus one immunity, checking in. I covered his ceiling fan with glitter. Fear me mother duckers. You are the worst kind of person. Like, literally Hitler. When I was 7 or 8, I did a science project on the interbacterial efficacy of various soaps. Basically involved keeping hands dirty for a day, pressing grubby thumbs in two petri dishes full of agar, then washing and doing the same again. I'd take tracings of the cultures, bigger colonies were bad, smaller ones good. This ended up winning the county science fair for my grade in a large metropolitan area, so that was nice. But before that, after I'd finished the experiments but before I'd discarded the dishes, I got into a dispute with my parents, don't remember what about. I thought, I'll show them. So I took the nastiest culture, and swabbed it onto their bedroom doorknob. They both got sick as dogs, and I had to take care of them for a couple of days. Serve me right. TLER. I waged bacteriological warfare against my parents using my science project. But I told them long ago and we laugh about it now. We had a bipolar lesbian who worked in my microbiology lab in college. She put some nasty shirt from a culture on her roommate's dildo. Girl ended up in the hospital for pyelonephritis. She decided not to press charges, but the perpetrator quit the lab shortly after, presumably to go work at Jidmo. I lived incredibly well. And this, my friends, is the best revenge. Live your life. Succeed. Prosper. When they see that, that'll be the best revenge. I used to live in a very small town, like 250 to 300 people. We had no stores, gas stations, etc. One day a local guy decided to open up a little store that sold the basics like groceries and rented movies. He hired a few of us high school kids to work the store, and promised us $50 a week for the summer to be paid at the end of the summer. We agreed, and started working. We gave up a summer stocking shelves, cleaning the bathroom, lawn care and whatever else. Well the end of the summer comes around. It's our last day of work, and he comes by with our paychecks $50 for each of us. For the whole summer. Needless to say, we weren't too happy. But his words were, what the duck are you gonna do about it? Drop the key off at my house since you won't need it anymore. We came up with a plan to pay this douchebag back. Before locking up the store for the last time, we left a window unlocked. We dropped the key off at the house. Around midnight, we were back at the store. Grabbed as much as we could, cigarettes, money from the register, candy. Probably about $1000 worth of shirt, locked the window then left through the emergency exit that had no alarm. There were also no cameras of any kind. Next day there were cops there. He accused all of us of doing it, but had no proof. He ended up having to shut down the store a few months later because the town heard how he didn't pay us and stopped doing business there. I don't feel bad. Ducker deserved it. Today I learned, there are people so dumb, they'll rip off teenagers, add insult to injury, and then, Ask for their key back. You know how when you're growing up you just assume that however your parents are, is how everyone in the world is? Well, 
my dad is ex special forces, has a super deep voice, and has a super bad temper. I just thought road rage and destroying people's vehicles with your fists was a thing that happened. Only later did I realize he's Bruce Banner. Aside from the time he pulled a gun on some teenagers who fired blanks at us out the window of their truck, my favorite story is as follows. Just me and him driving his diesel work truck a few miles to get groceries. Three or four college age athletic kids in a convertible try to pass. Dad gets pissed for some reason. They pass us. He jumps out of the truck mad as hell. They pile out calling him old man blah blah blah. He calms down slightly. Goes to the back of the truck and pulls out a 24 inches pipe wrench from the tool tray. They're like what the duck? It's not for me. It's for you. Holds out pipe wrench in their direction. I need to tell the cops when they get here that I gave you every chance. At an all-male military boarding school during high school, there was this huge douche on my hall. We took his Febreze bottle and filled it with piss. Then took that bottle and sprayed his pillow, wall locker and opposite corner. So he gets back, smells urine and immediately grabs his Febreze and douses everything. Eat a donk. Donovan. Eat. A donk. I had a friend in high school who became an asshole during our senior year. There were a bunch of little things that added up to our friendship falling apart, but at the worst of it I pooped on his car one night. Real simple, I just crawled up on the hood of his car, and took a shirt on his windshield. I just knew that he'd walk outside the next day and think, what the duck is this? Fun fact, we're actually great friends again now. He still has no idea it was me. I think you forgot to know, in your username. The Phantom Pooper strikes again. Thanks for tuning in for this WTF Red episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the one and only S Credit channel that will blow your mind, every time.